Dr. Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King Avenue here in Knoxville, Tennessee, one of 16 streets in the state of Tennessee named after Dr. King, whose presence will be felt throughout our college basketball coverage all weekend long, beginning with Kentucky and Tennessee coming up. Welcome to Saturday Primetime. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. And needless to say, these are not the best of times for the Kentucky Wildcats right now. They've lost two in a row. They've lost four out of six. They lost by 26 at Alabama. We're just beaten at home by South Carolina, and they are one in three in the SEC for the first time in a long time. And it's not going to be easy here today in Knoxville. Big building, big scene, and a great team. The fifth-ranked Tennessee Volunteers, the opposition for Kentucky here this afternoon. And Tennessee 14 and 2 on the season, and a perfect 4 and 0 in SEC play. Welcome inside Thompson Bowling Arena. Again, about 21,000 people are here to watch the volunteers of the Wildcats. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Holly Rowe will join us momentarily. As we said, not going to be easy. What does Kentucky have to do to Jay? Uh, do today to try to get out of here with a W. Recruit. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Kentucky's got the personnel to be much better than they've been, and it starts with defense. They haven't done a good job of guarding the ball. They don't guard duck ins particularly well. And as a result, they're getting into rotation too quick, and that's giving up a lot of open threes. Kentucky's offense isn't, they can score. The problem is they're playing against the best defensive team in the country. And Tennessee does guard the ball. They do a great job of staying out of rotation. They put great pressure on the ball, which helps with their post defense. The first part about post defense is guarding the ball and putting pressure on the ball. But they do not allow open threes. They do a great job of getting into help and staying in gaps, and they rebound, and that starts their break. And Tennessee is a much better offensive team. They get into flow much better this year. So Kentucky's got a huge challenge in this game against Tennessee. They also have some health and injury challenges. With more on that, here's Holly Rowe. Well, the adversity continues for Kentucky. They're going to have to play without two of their best players today. They do get two guys back. They are very excited that Jacob Toppin and Kaysen Wallace will be able to return to this game. But they are without Severe Willard and Damian Collins. They will not play. They tried to warm up and neither could go. Cal told the guys before the game, listen, you're in for the fight of your life. But guys, we're here. We're in Knoxville. We might as well fight. We burned the boats. There's no going back. They're going to have to overcome that adversity today. Yeah, he told Holly and me, they dropped us off on the shore. The boat is burning. There's five of them and five of us. Let's go fight. So we'll see how much fight the Wildcats have in them today. Again, coming off a loss at home to South Carolina. And Tennessee, Jay, in each of their last two games, have held the opposing team scoreless through the under-16 timeout, the first four minutes plus of the game. And right away, Kentucky in man-to-man. -man and Tyreek Key doing a really nice job of putting pressure on the ball, forced a five-second count because Kentucky never put it on the deck. And Kentucky got two cuts to the basket, but they couldn't be seen because vision was taken away due to ball pressure. This Tennessee team is experienced. It is deep, and again, it is statistically the best defensive team in the country, but they, they can score the ball pretty well as well as we take a look at the Tennessee starting five brought to you by CDW, including the big guy, Uros Plopcic, 7-1 senior from Serbia who gets the balls on the board. Tennessee spreading the floor, and they're going to go right at Oscar Shibwe. They want to hit him on every play, make him feel the volunteer defense and their offense and see if they can wear him down through the course of 40 minutes. A turnover stolen away by Vescovy, and he'll lay it in. And exactly what Kentucky must have been worried about, again, considering how poorly they started the game against South Carolina. Now, Kaysen Wallace is a point guard. He played point guard in high school in Dallas, Texas, and he is an outstanding player, an outstanding prospect. But this is a tough place to come in for your first time as the primary point guard. Pull-up jumper by Livingston won't go, and it's Tennessee ball. And Tyree Key running the point, the transfer from Indiana State. He is a scoring point guard. Then when Zakai Ziegler comes off the bench, they have a different dimension off the floor. And they've got Santiago Vescovi as well, who can play on the ball or off the ball. And how about Julian Phillips, the outstanding freshman number two for Tennessee? He really looks like he's coming into his own recently. Well, Phillips can get to the rim and a really good rebounder. So can Kamwa. 
Olivier Kamwa, the 6'9 senior from Helsinki, Finland, and it is all Tennessee early. And that, that's an example of Kentucky's defensive issues. I mean, Jacob Toppin is an outstanding athlete. He got blown by. That was an 18, 20-foot drive with nobody coming over from the weak side. That's as easy as it gets for an offense. I mean, this is just a, a simple catch and exchange. And Jacob Toppin, he didn't even get screened. All he had to do was get through that exchange. There's just not that sense of urgency on defense. And nobody can argue, hey, you're going against a better athlete. And that's no disrespect to Olivia Kamwa. Jacob Toppin is one of the best athletes in the country and yet couldn't stay in front. Shibwe driving on Plavcic. Nice look, C.J. Frederick, no. And it's Tennessee ball. You know, one of the big stories on, in the Kentucky program was Oscar Shibwe after the South Carolina game in his postgame comments talking about needing more fight from his teammates. And uh, John Calipari said that he apologized to his teammates. You know, there was some nuance that maybe didn't come across as clearly as they would have hoped it would. They all love Shibwe. They know uh, how much this means to him and how hard he plays. But to Shibwe's point, Jay, you want to see more fight from this Kentucky team now that they're being challenged the way they are this year. Phillips with the offensive rebound. That'll go, and it's 8 to nothing. You know, with all respect to, to Oscar Shibway, I'm not sure there was any nuance in that. He was absolutely clear, and it's okay. I mean, it's great that, that he patched everything up with his teammates. I don't think that anything needed to be patched up. He's right. Livingston spins. Tough shot won't go. Rebound down to Shibwe, averaging almost six offensive rebounds per game this year. And he kicks it out to Kaysen Wallace. That's normally a kick out three, but Vescovy did a great job of recovering. Look how difficult these shots are. You know, there's only been one open shot for Kentucky, and that was C.J. Frederick in the left corner. Other than that, everything has been challenged and challenged by multiple defenders. This is as connected as its defense as you're going to see. When the ball's up on the glass, they're just not getting blockouts and blockout responsibilities. And Julian Phillips is an outstanding rebounder. Averages over five and a half rebounds per game as a 6'8 freshman. And Rick Barnes's team, in addition to all the other things they're doing well, they're the number one offensive rebounding team in the nation to getting 41% of their misses on the season. We talked about how deep they are as Key and Plavcic and Kamwa all go to the bench. And one of the guys that the fans love seeing come in off the bench, Zakai Ziegler, has checked into the game now for the Volunteers. He's actually second on the team in a minute's play this year in spite of the fact he comes off the bench. Well, he changes the game with his speed and his defensive ability when he comes in. And also, he's able to avoid you know, early fouls at the start of the game when the officials are trying to set a tone. A good look won't go down for Josiah Jordan James, the senior from Charleston. And the foul called on Phillips, his first. He okay, just went over the top on that Case and Wallace rebound. Rick Barnes now in his eighth year here in Knoxville. 768 wins at the Division I level. The Final Four with Texas 20 years ago, Jay. The 2002-2003 the season. And certainly has a team this year capable of getting to the Final Four. Yeah, that 03 team was T.J. Ford. And now Casey Wallace is going to have to deal with Zakai Ziegler, and Ziegler can get up underneath them. It's a really difficult challenge, and a rush shot there by Antonio Reeves, worried about the defense getting to him. And Kentucky can't buy one right now, so they have yet to score eight to nothing. We'll go behind the scenes. Jay Billis and Rick Barnes, a little Tennessee film session, diagramming some of the things the Volunteers try to do on the court. We actually watched Emily in Paris. <laughs> In the film room with Tennessee coach Rick Barnes and Rick, why is your team better this year than last year? Would you say? Well, I think we're older. I think they have a better understanding of what we're trying to do on the offensive end and the de defensive end, and we've tried to improve areas like our rebounding. We weren't as good at rebounding things as we needed a year ago, but I think the fact that we've got some experience. And here's a set. I think you call it Warrior. Mm -hmm. The set where, again, Santi is so people try to take him out a lot, so he's really good at using himself as a screener. 
and trying to set a back screen, wondering right now they're going to really show or not. They do. If they do, we got a mismatch. I mean, a pin down right here. And then if he doesn't have that shot, we pop. And we got a guard down here. We can take it over and in. Yeah, the guard switches try to take away the lob, and all of a sudden Olivia Kamwa is going to be rebounding if the shot yeah. is missed against a little guard. And, and the ideal thing, what you just said, is that we want that shot taken so we can rebound the ball. That's what we want. Your offensive flow is so much fun to watch this year, and your defense is always there. But thanks for joining the film room, Rick Barnes. That was fun. Jay and Rick did that yesterday. Uh, I, I was allowed into the room and as long as I kept silent in the back row of the of the film room. And it was really, really interesting to hear him go through some of their offensive and defensive principles. And again, hard to argue with the success. 768 career wins at five different institutions. You know, you might want to keep that keeping silent routine uh, <laughs> through the game. That might be helpful. Uh, still basking in the glow of the lack of a play by play announcer that he had in his last game when you and Jimmy Dykes. So it's is most of up. America. <laughs> There's a steal by Wallace. Averages better than two steals per game. Ahead to Toppin, and finally Kentucky is on the board. Well, that's what Kaysen Wallace does. He had eight steals against Michigan State, one of the best defenders in the country and a two-way player that I think has a chance to be a truly great player at Kentucky. But he did a great job of navigating that screen up top and getting over Josiah Jordan James and then getting back in front of Zakai Ziegler to make that steal. And that's what Kentucky's going to have to do is get advantage situations in transition. Uh, after a defensive rebound, get a steal, take it the other way so they don't have to grind it out five on five in the half court all game long. Vescovy almost lost it, has to dive to the deck, and Kentucky's got it again. So back-to-back -back turnovers committed by the Vols, and then a foul on Vescovy, who was saying to one of the officials that he was fouled, and he appears to be feeling a little something in his left shoulder, and he is a left-handed shooter. And that's the kind of fight that John Calipari wants to see. You know, navigating the screen, getting around in front. Vescovy just lost it. But guys getting on the floor, Kaysen Wallace diving to get the ball. He was first to the floor. And that's the kind of attitude Kentucky wants to continue. Wallace now, Kentucky with a three on two going down the court. And Antonio Reeves, the senior, the transfer from Illinois State, shooting 40% from three on the season. Great cut by Kaysen Wallace to get the ball. And that created that advantage situation in the spread shooters in the corners. Antonio Reeves, one of the better shooters in the country, transferring in from Illinois State. Boy, Ziegler takes a three over top and left it way short, and all of a sudden momentum is swung in the direction of the Cats. Good response after the timeout. Good pass inside. Shibwe can't finish it, and the rebound down to the Vols. And give some credit to Jonas Adu in there. He just stayed behind Shibwe and forced him to finish over the top. And Shibwe is a great player, but he doesn't elevate around the basket. Tennessee started the game four for five, now scoreless for about three minutes. Boy, they caught Kentucky on a switch. They had Shibwe on Ziegler, couldn't take advantage of it. James misses the three, and it's tipped out of bounds by Meshack and back to Kentucky. Tennessee was trying to pressure in the backcourt, and Kaysen Wallace does a really good job of making a cut and discarding Zakai Ziegler. Now all of a sudden you got three on two. And yet two shooters wide and they went to the best shooter. That was a good decision by Case and Wallace to get it to Antonio Reeves. And Reeves does a really good job of setting his feet and getting that shot up quickly. And what a response by Kentucky. It looked pretty dire with an eight nothing disadvantage and Kentucky hadn't had really had an open shot. And now all of a sudden in transition Kentucky can breathe a little bit and feel like hey we're in the game and we got a chance. And Rick Barnes not liking what he was seeing, Jay. He brought three starters back into the game in Phillips, Kamwa, and Plavchic. As Santiago Vescovi has been holding that left shoulder and grimacing ever since he came out of the game a couple of minutes ago. Something to keep an eye on. Where well, Kaysen Wallace couldn't really get the ball into an operating area to open, open up the offense. They were in that little diamond set. And a push on the baseline, a foul going against Tennessee. You know, if you can't see open people, they might as well not be open. And that's where the ball pressure really affects Tennessee's opponents. And the best at putting pressure on the ball is Zakai Ziegler. Even though he's small, he gets up underneath you, makes you turn your back, takes away your vision. You know, some defenders do it with their length. The Cason Wallace is going to go out right now. He's had a bloody mouth for several possessions. And finally, the officials said, hey, you got to get that taken care of. And he's going over the bench right now. 
No surprise it's a physical game when you play Tennessee. Holly what do you got. Well you're talking about the ball pressure of Zakai Ziegler and he is such a vital piece of what Tennessee does but he's been battling an injury the last couple of days he's had some soreness in his knee talked with their athletic trainer Chad and he said you know it's kind of like jumpers knee we're just going to have to maintain this the rest of the season but he didn't practice much yesterday he did some shooting drills but didn't really go through the team period they're doing blood flow restriction on him ultrasound machine called a SAM that is really effective to shoot ultrasound in for four hours in the evening but they're going to have to maintain some injury situations with Ziegler. He is one of the most vital pieces of their game from a mentality standpoint and a toughness standpoint. Holly, thank you. You saw the numbers there. Second of the SEC in assists in league games. He is first and by a wide margin. He's averaging seven and a half assists per game in four conference games. Well, a good switch of that guard exchange. Nobody to pass it to or hand it off to. Out of bounds, still Kentucky ball. But Ziegler is a competitor. I remember when Rick Barnes was recruiting Zakai Ziegler out of New York, told me one time that he would call him and Ziegler would answer the phone. He's on the subway going to a pickup game that he was always playing. And Frederick can get that ball. It's okay to throw it in the backcourt from underneath as long as you don't establish the front court first. The Cats glad to have Frederick back. He missed three games, most of a fourth with a dislocated finger. You can see he's got uh, the ring finger on his right hand wrapped up, left. but he he can still really shoot it. Knock down some. They need the outside shooting that he provides. Boy, what a great rotation defensively. What a very good pass by Jacob Toppin. Not a smart pass because Plopchish came over and cut off the baseline, but it was the rotation down to get the steal that was so impressive. This is five playing one, playing as one on the defensive end. So check out the rotation. It's not the initial defender, the secondary defender that comes over. Plopchich comes over to stop the drive, but then watch Key as he comes down. He rotates down to get in front of Shibway and make that play. That's an alert play. Those are those are help defenders that are not playing their man. They're playing the ball and adjusting to where the ball is and where it's going to go. That, that's really smart defense by Tennessee and especially by Tyreek Key. Number one in the country in defensive efficiency per Ken Palm and, and quite frankly it's not even close Houston is second and they are a ways back Tennessee is the gold standard for defense so far this college basketball season really good communicating defensive team especially with Josiah Jordan James on the floor he is a great talker out on the floor and he just came back in because Julian Phillips went to the bench with his second foul Vescovy's back in just got thrown around under the bucket and a three goes down to tie the game is now continuing. Kentucky is on an 8-0 run and Terry Oglesby one of the officials trying to make sure things don't boil over between Oscar Shibwe and Uros Plavcic. Looks like they got a double foul and I'm usually not a fan of double fouls. It seems like a little bit of a cop out but officials I think it was Mike Eads told me one time that it's a really useful tool for officials when they think some of the physicality is getting out of hand but Plavcic and you know there was there was a, a lot of physical play on that rebound and look he just goes right after Shibwe they get tangled up and you know that looked more like a, a defensive foul on Plavcic to me but but the double foul is uh, it, the officials love to use that as a tool. Chuck Jones one of the officials on his way to the table to give Jay a rundown on what they just called. Actually when they looked at it so Chuck Jones is kind enough to come over and tell us so they looked at it and decided to make it uh, a foul on Plavcic and they just upgraded it to a, an F1. So nothing on Shibwe. Nothing on Shibwe. Okay. Plavcic a very physical player and Shibwe obviously uh, not going to give ground to anybody. It's after the three goes in as Plavcic just goes out and, and kind of gets the left forearm elbow up a little bit trying to block out Shibwe. Look I don't I don't think there was anything dirty in that. It's just a really hard block out that reached the level of a foul. The officials decided to go F1 with it. But you know these are physical games and the game has gotten more and more physical over the last two year two three years I'd say. Let's go to Holly. Well, guys, earlier in this ball game, I could see Urosh and Oscar really going at each other and talking. 
the officials came over and warned them, separated them. This has been going on since early in the game, and it's escalating. So this is a way for the officials to get back in control right now after that warning. Although Kentucky inbounding, so I think maybe the discussion was whether or not they should upgrade it to an F1. Obviously, they didn't, Jay, or there would Oh, I thought Chuck said that they yeah. upgraded. Uh, okay, we, we must have misheard. Yeah, there's I a lot that. of noise. I think the other two officials were deciding whether it should be upgraded, so clearly it wasn't because they didn't shoot the free throw. So it was a personal foul on Plopchic, and now Kentucky has its first lead, a 10-0 run. Tennessee scoreless for five minutes. Plopchic scores over Shibwe. They're not going to bring a double team. Plopchic has great size and really improved his skill level over the years. That was a smart play to go to that left shoulder, and there was not much Shibwe could, could do because he was locked down. Frederick with his second three of the game and Kentucky back on top. I think CJ Frederick can really help this team. He's been injured, but he's an efficient post passer, very precise, and he's got deep range. Usually catch and shoot, but he's good coming off screens as well. Boy, Plopchic was wide open underneath on that low cross screen. Kamwa with a drive and slid his feet a little bit in the paint and turns it over on the travel. C.J. Frederick Jay leading the way for Kentucky at the offensive end. Well, really good cutter. He made two great cuts to get that first shot. And then the second shot off the handoff and couldn't recover to him. He got that shot up quickly. The transfer from Iowa. The main attraction. Telling their guys in the huddle, messaging that this is going to be a long fight. They're breaking it down into four-minute segments, and right now it's tied at 1-1. Round three is about to start, and Rick Barnes' message to his team is, we got to guard better. They didn't like the pressure on the ball. Let's get out there and really frustrated. Of course, they brought Zakai Ziegler back in to do just that. And that, that's, that's something that happens all the time around the country. The teams break it into four-minute segments. That's when the TV timeouts are. And the round thing is obviously for a fight. And that started with Bob McKillop at Davidson. And Rick Barnes has taken a lot of things over the years from Davidson. They've been good friends for a long, long time. Bob McKillop, one of the greatest coaches I've ever been around, as are John Calipari and Rick Barnes, Hall of Famers. A shot clock violation has been called on Kentucky, and all of the players on the floor are saying that the Shibwe attempt, the first shot in the sequence, hit the rim. But the officials say no it didn't and it is a shot clock violation but now they're going to go to the monitor to have a look did that hit the rim. Mm, I don't know didn't look like it did no. but whether it did or not you still have to know what the shot clock says. I don't think there's a, anything there to overturn it from what we can see. And again, the call on the floor was that it did not hit the rim. There's a different angle. I mean, initially I thought it, it did didn't and wasn't close, but. No. Shot clock violation, Tennessee ball. It is a sellout here today and that means better than 21,000 people are here at Thompson Bowling Arena one of the largest uh, facilities in the country for college basketball and boy do they love this team they've had some good teams in recent years and this one right up there with the best of them much better job by Kentucky of guarding that quick duck in Tennessee at three along the baseline Plavchic along the lane line and just ducked in after that high ball screen and Kentucky defended that pretty well. Plopchich over Toppin and Tennessee back within one. Boy, nice job on the screen and roll. And Plopchich rolls so hard to the basket. And he was wide open. Shibway and Kentucky had all kinds of problems with the pick and roll game against Alabama last week. As Charles Bediaco, they exploited it time and time again. Tennessee doesn't play that way quite as much as Alabama does, but a little little dribble handoff putting Shibway in a tough spot. Yeah, you stay on the ball too long, and that's what you're talking about, putting you in rotation. You know, Jacob Toppin has to rotate over, and as great as an athlete as he is, he's a weak side shot blocker, not an on-ball shot blocker. So Plopchich could go right up. But just, you know, Shibwe has to show you don't want to let the, the ball handler turn the corner, but if you stay with the ball too long, you're putting your defense in rotation, and that's what Kentucky has to stay out of against anybody. 
but especially against Tennessee on the road. And interesting, that foul on Ziegler, already the seventh team foul for Tennessee. That put Kentucky in the bonus, missing the front end was Toppin. Kentucky is not a good free throw shooting team. 65.5% on the season as Josiah Jordan James puts the balls back on top. Well, being in the bonus, Kentucky has to attack the lane. They can't just play windshield wiper around the lane. They've got to attack it off the dribble or off the pass and put Tennessee in a position to, to foul. C.J. Frederick kind of a heady play right there trying to fight through his screen and he gets the call. That will be on Vescovy and that is going to be the second on Santiago Vescovy who's a very important player for Tennessee. And those are things that officials always need to watch. You know, you don't grab and hold the guys that can't shoot. You grab and hold the best players. And that's exactly what Vescovy did right there. You know, if you grab, even if you grab initially, you just disrupt the, the rhythm and timing of any sort of action. And Frederick is a really good cutter in order to get the ball and get shooting opportunities. Boy, and Rick Barnes is all over one of the officials right now about that last call. So Frederick to the line. Vescovy has gone to the bench again another thing Tennessee's got going for them is not just depth but quality depth They're their six through ten are really good but this is a loss this is a guy four years in the program very heady player terrific shooter and they may be without him for nine minutes and forty four seconds now and Frederick makes them both Frederick's a really good free throw shooter shoots about eighty six percent from the line so he's one of those guys you do not want to foul. And he's got 10 points already. So he can open things up because he can knock shots down. And that stretches the defense. Good play by Shibway, and he hustles after it. Had a couple of teammates, couldn't find him. Now back to Reeves. Shibway's got really good hands. He gets close to two steals a game. Reigning national player of the year, averaging about 16 points, 13 rebounds per game this year. And Ziegler's pressure is really affecting Kentucky getting into their offense. Frederick with a long one comes up short and the rebound down to Tobey Awaka, 6'8 freshman, Hyde Park, New York. Physical, terrific rebounder. And meanwhile, Casey Wallace, who missed most of the last game for Kentucky against South Carolina with a lower back issue, is in the, the tunnel right now. And clearly, Jay, that may be acting up on him again. And you mentioned Tobe Awaka. He's a great offensive rebounder per minute. One of the best in the country. Ziegler has to force it up with one on the clock and gets the friendly bounce. Oh, that's the competitive nature of Zakai Ziegler. It's not that that was a great shot or anything, but he knew the situation and had a great understanding of what needed to be accomplished. And now backcourt violation turns it over back to Tennessee. And credit Ziegler for that turnover with his pressure on the ball. Had to throw out of it. And just a great job by Ziegler to understand the situation. And he's almost got a clock in his head. And you mentioned it, Dan. You know, an SEC play, he's averaging like seven and a half assists per game. And he's coming in off the bench. And every time he does, the pace of the game changes yep. because of his defense. Now a nice steal. Adu Thierro comes up with it and then has it rejected by Jonas Adu, but it will bounce in. May have been tipped in there by Lance Ware. Boy, Adu Thierro, a freshman from Leedsdale, Pennsylvania, 6'6", and uh, doesn't play sometimes. Has some games where he doesn't play at all, but in there right now, and again, this may have to do with Casey Wallace having some back issues again as a walk up with a nice jump hook. Well, he's got strength. Terrific low base. And he leads Division One in total rebound percentage per minute played. Only plays eight minutes a game. Shows you how deep they are, but averages three points and four rebounds per game in those eight minutes. Now tipped away from behind by Fierro. Another good play by the freshman. Reeves from the wing. Wedgie. Neck ball. We led the nation in that. <laughs> and a timeout on the floor. Tobe Awaka, some good minutes off the bench, Jay, for the Bulls. Yeah, played at Cardinal Hayes High School, where Jamal Mashburn went to school. George Carlin went there, too. Right. You can't say uh, 
Can't give us all of his words on TV, though, can you? Stick around after the break. <laughs> I'd be happy to. Come on and watch. Tennessee didn't have the most efficient start shooting the ball early in this season. And so Rick Barnes did something really cool. He stole an idea he saw at Arizona. You see the orange tape on the right corners and the left corner. He wanted his team to have a focal point, somewhere they could focus in on so they would get it a little bit higher off the glass. Since they've been doing that, they really focus, do a lot of drills in practice. So it's kissing it off the glass in that exact spot. Since they have added this little touch in practice, look at the numbers. First 11 games, 40%. Last five since they added the tape, 54%. Of course, this is only one small piece, but guys, I think the focal point is helping. Look at Urosh. He's got some nice spin in traffic, and look where he focuses the ball. This small attention to detail really paying off for the balls. The kiss off the glass is right where it needs to be. You just got to make sure you hit the right piece of tape. <laughs> you put it on the wrong side, then it goes off the other edge. That, that's pretty him. cool. Also, uh, you know, a guy like Zakai Ziegler's only oh, Zakai Ziegler only 5'10 to get it high off the glass, soft, can help him. How about Vescovy coming back into the game with two fouls here, Jay? Well, he's an older player, and Sonny Vescovy has come so far in his four years. He is one of the toughest covers in the league because he is always moving. He's got good strength, and he plays slow to fast, like he sets his man up before a cut. Asked Rick Barnes about him yesterday. I remember Vescovy showed up in the middle of the season because Lamonte Turner was having shoulder issues and eventually underwent career ending surgery. And they had been recruiting Vescovy out of the NBA Global Academy in Australia. They had a need because of the Turner injury. He showed up on Monday, December 30th. This is back in his freshman season. Had three practices with the team and then started against LSU on Saturday, five days. After he got there, he got cleared on the Friday, started on the Saturday, made six threes and had four assists in his first game. Now, he did turn the ball over a lot, but obviously, you know, things were moving quickly. He didn't really know the offense, and he's in, turned into a great four-year player here in Knoxville. A right, nice job by Awaka. To... Nice job by Awaka on Oscar Shibway to drive him down to the baseline instead of letting him get into the middle where he could get to that left shoulder. That's just smart defense by the freshman. He's going to be a terrific player, don't you think? Yeah, well, I mean, look yeah. at how he's built. Yeah. I mean, his low base is so strong. But look, Shibway can't do anything underneath there. He just has to throw it back out. And then Tyreek Key right on there, maintained a good legal guarding position. It was probably that little discard with the arm that picked up the foul more than the contact. Awaka kind of looks like the next generation of Grant Williams and Admiral Schofield. They don't recruit a lot of skinny guys here. Well, they don't. If they do, they don't say skinny for very long. Right. This is one of the hardest working programs in the country. And these guys are in the gym, in the weight room, and their facilities here at Thompson Bowling are fantastic. And away from the ball, a Kentucky foul. And that one going on Casey Wallace, his second. So he's going to have to sit down a little dejected as he makes his way to the bench. And the big score for Kentucky, Frederick is back in. Now, Vescovy usually sets a screen and then gets a screen. And there it is. And gets the shot from the corner. A pretty That's good look. Exactly the shot they wanted. And one of the ways shooters get open, if you can set a screen, make your defender have to deal with that, then you got a great chance to come off of a screen afterwards. Screen for the screener action. Strong drive and finish by Chris Livingston, the freshman from Akron, Ohio. John Calipari told him before the game, this is going to be your kind of game. Get after it. You like the physical stuff and a good drive there by Livingston. Well, Livingston had a good game against UCLA, had 14 points, even though Kentucky was beaten in that game, but he's only shooting 26% from the field in SEC play, but that was a strong drive. He is a, a really long athletic wing that can guard multiple positions. Comes off that handoff, they go underneath because he's not likely to shoot it, but he just took it strong, went right into the chest of the defender and knocked him back a little bit. That was a really good drive by Livingston. It's got to wear you down a little bit on the other side when every time they blow the whistle it feels like Rick Barnes has the luxury of making three subs. He just brought Plavchic, Kamwa, and Ziegler back into the game. The Tennessee guys unlikely to get tired and really unlikely to get in foul trouble because of how deep this team is. And it's like playing against a hockey team in more ways than one. 
Tennessee spreading the floor. He got switches going on, and Camo is really good in that spot. He can catch it, face, and then drive to his right. And that's a tough matchup for Lance Ware. Those elbow catches can be really difficult to defend because you've got cutting, and then Camo, who's as improved as any player on this roster. He is coming off a 21-point, 10-rebound game against South Carolina. He's shooting 70% in Southeastern Conference games. It's still early, but after four games, 70% is pretty solid. Over two games, he made 15 consecutive shots. And a travel is the call. As Shibwe was down and Ware had the ball, and as he stepped over his fallen teammate, he turned it over. Yeah, John Calipari saying it's not a walk. And now another whistle, another foul. This one on Antonio Reeves, I believe, and that'll send Tennessee right back to the line. Well, Tennessee's cutting in the way they're spreading their actions on out of bounds underneath. You know, at times you're having to use your hands and grab. And that's always been illegal. In this game, it's being called. Vescovy at the line, 73% on the season. That's what Tennessee shoots as a team as well. One of the great things about Santiago Vescovi is his shot fake. You got to stay down on that. Tomorrow here on ESPN, women's college basketball. One o'clock Eastern time. It's Missouri taking on number one, South Carolina. And then at 3.30 Eastern, a rivalry game between NC State and North Carolina. What did you see Stanford play last night? Like Cameron Brink was awesome. She had seven blocks in that game. Wow. She, she's got to be... I mean, Aaliyah Boston is maybe the best player in the country, but for Defensive Player of the Year, Cameron Brink's got to be right up there. Subs for both teams, 5-16 to go here in the first half. One-point lead for the Vols. Already eight lead changes in this game. Remember, Kentucky without Xavier Wheeler and Damian Collins, and Kentucky coming in struggling, having lost two in a row and four of six, but they are in the game here with number five, Tennessee. Got to run something to get C.J. Frederick a look. They're running a little floppy set right now. He can come off either of those elbow screeners, Toppin or Shibwe. And there he is. Good fade. Can't hit the shot. Shibwe with a rebound and the finish. Boy, talk about playing hard. You know, Plavchic was there to block him out, but Shibwe just so strong. And he grabbed that with two hands. There was no doubt. Look how he goes against the blockout, fights it, and then just discards Plavcic and goes straight up for the dunk. Talk about a man's rebound. That was big time. What a play by Oscar Shibwe. But uh, apparently the basket does not count. The foul, I guess, was on the arm of Shibwe as he was coming down, I believe. So the basket does not count. So this is one and one for Shibwe. Foul was on Plavcic, his second. Let's have a look. The foul there, and then he gathers and goes up. Are you a fan? Would you like to see more continuation like there is in the NBA? Yes. Yeah. Would you like to think about that for a moment? No, it's <laughs> not, a, not a hard decision. There's Vescovy setting a little back pick and then curling off a little fade screen. Good, there's that shot fake. Boy, he's good, isn't he? You're recovering to him with speed. He just gives you a subtle little shot fake. You fly by, and then he's got a the time that you wouldn't get in a horse game to put up a three and the unselfishness for Tennessee offensively is uh, easily apparent they are number one of the nation in assist percentage at about 70 percent of made field goals and Tennessee basically has two point guards on the floor with Vescovy and Ziegler and Vescovy playing the two right now so he can just work off screens 
And there's always backside action. You, know, you take a dribble to the baseline and there's a screen behind you so you can play behind that action. That can be really difficult to guard. Kamwa and Key was cutting through the key, so the pass got deflected. Kamwa wide open, though. And now here come the Cats looking to reclaim the lead, and they will. Toppin finds Shibwe in transition. Boy, lucky for Toppin that Shibwe really ran the floor hard. He was going to try to get that ball to Reeves, and he wasn't open at the last second, and he was able to get it to Shibwe, but just because Shibwe had a great rim run. Kentucky weathered an early 8 to nothing deficit, and they've got a two-point lead here late in the first half. And give Kentucky credit. They have fought on the defensive end. Boy, Reeves, everything but the finish. He looked like he had the angle off the glass, but he couldn't finish it. And Tennessee's got to start getting something going in transition. They've been mostly a half-court team, and that's by design for Kentucky. You know, they want them to play in the half-court. Vescovy with a lob. And Kamwa couldn't finish it. Back come the Cats. And not as fast in the advance without Xavier Wheeler in the game, who's a one-man break. But still, Kentucky's transition defense, not where Rick Barnes wants it to be. That, that was not a fast break. It was a break situation. But to get a layup out of that, Rick Barnes can't be happy with it. You, know, you get the ball to Wheeler, he's down there and no time, but a great job by Shibwe to run the floor. And I don't think Tennessee's upset with this shot, but Shibwe can knock down a 17-footer. I agree. I mean, Kentucky's problems defensively are fixable. You know, they're not the shot blocking team that they've been in past years, although they, they are good at weak side shot blocking. But guarding the ball, handling pick and roll situations better. I mean, Shibwe is going to be in drop coverage most of the time. But when he's not and he stays with the ball too long, that puts him in rotation. You can't have that happen. The retired jerseys here, Allen Houstondale, Ellis Bernard King, Ernie Grunfeld, and today Chris Lofton will become the fifth player on the men's side here at Tennessee to have his jersey retired. Outstanding career. Back when Bruce Pearl was the coach here and still the SEC's all-time leader in made three-pointers with 431. Not only one of the best players I've ever had the, the privilege of covering, but one of the best people. He is one of the nicest, kindest human beings you will ever meet. And congratulations to Chris Lofton. You talk about something that's well-deserved. It's well-deserved and overdue. Inspirational as well. Remember, he was diagnosed with testicular cancer between his junior and senior seasons and dealt with that into his senior year. Uh, Maysville, Kentucky, right, but not heavily recruited. And a guy from Kentucky going on to become one of the all-time greats at Tennessee. And lives in Lexington. And give Kentucky a lot of credit. You know, they are forcing Tennessee into challenge jump shots. You know, Tennessee has not been getting to the rim either on their duck ins or drives. And an offensive foul on Olivier Kamwa. And Kamwa took on the defense without moving at first. The ball never moved. And that's just not the way Rick Barnes wants to run offense in the half court. And give credit to Toppin. He maintained legal guarding position, jumped in front. And Oscar Shibwe, just an inside pivot, little jab step and goes up with it. And after making his first, he's much more confident and now all of a sudden, if he puts a shot fake in there, he can go by a defender when he makes that move. Jay, he's got eight points in this game. All of them have come in the last four minutes. And with seven rebounds as well, he is clearly on his way to another double-double here this afternoon. And interestingly enough, Oscar Shibway's never scored over 13 against Tennessee in his career. Ziegler misses the layup. Boy, he had a clear path to the bucket after the steal. And it never even... I mean, never mind, didn't go in, didn't even hit the rim on his way off the glass. He needed to listen to Holly Rowe and yeah. use that tape, but he heard footsteps. He, he knew behind him Jacob Toppin was there and just rushed it a little bit. But you're not going to see a guy miss an open layup very often. Miss the tape. And a foul on Josiah Jordan James. And back to the free throw line to go the Cats. It'll be Antonio Reeves. Boy, missed opportunity there. 8 nothing Tennessee early in the game. 29-15 Kentucky since. And really, Dan, this has been about Tennessee's offense. You know, Kentucky's defense has been much improved over their last several outings. 
but you know to hold the team to 30 points in the first half you know that's not necessarily I think that Tennessee's offense has put their defense in some really bad spots Kentucky's had a few runouts they've had some transition opportunities but this is really about Tennessee going against Kentucky's defense and only putting up 23 points James for three a big bucket for the volunteers well, the lefty senior he has limited reps in practice because of that knee but his inside out ability at 12 against South Carolina if he gets going that makes Tennessee a much more difficult team to play against Livingston into the paint elevates and is fouled he was fouled on the initial drive and then fouled on the shot but that ball on the skip pass going from side to side that was a smart play from Chris Livingston to drive that closeout and you got to close out short to him you know he can shoot the ball he's got nine threes on the year but you want to close out under control you know the defense in gaps but that was just not a good closeout hips were wide open just opened up the middle McDonald's All-American Gatorade player of the year in the state of Virginia a year ago Chris Livingston and John Calipari in their game in London in practice he passed up a shot and John Calipari got all over him said take the shot and said if you miss it get in the gym <laughs> but you can't pass up open shots that's what you want from your coach right giving you the license to shoot when you're open yeah I never heard that no foreign concept <laughs> Ziegler created the contact didn't get the call didn't make the layup and now Kentucky ball and they can run it down if they want seven or eight seconds between the game clock and the shot clock that's what you want to do with Ziegler if he drives make him finish without fouling him make him finish oversize and a timeout called by John Calipari to set up a shot some things to like if you're coach Cal Kentucky on the road up by seven. Kentucky plus 12 on the glass another thing that John Calipari is going to be happy about and Rick Barnes not so much. Well when you miss that many shots and Tennessee's missed a lot of them you know, the defense is going to have more of a chance to get those rebounds and it's good that they're getting them. Good deep post position for Shebway, but he couldn't knock it down. Got plenty of time to get a good shot here for Tennessee. Ziegler. Hey. Topping down with a rebound, and the first half will come to a close with Kentucky on the road leading by seven. Ten early points by C.J. Frederick, and then it was Oscar Shebway really leading the way offensively towards the end of the half for the Wildcats. As John Calipari's team trying to pull off the upset here on the road. Coach Cows with Holly. Well, Coach, you guys were down by eight to start the game. You called timeout, or there's a timeout. What did like you many say? Times. You were so like, good. Hold on. Many times. Did we miss three wide open shots? We did. We did. That's why we were down 8 0, not what we're running and all that. And then you get in the huddle and say, we're all right. You just missed open shots. Just keep playing. But the whole defense. point of this is defense. Yes. And wait a minute. When they throw you to the floor and do that, you, you got to hold your ground. When you get a bloody mouth, you probably didn't do it to yourself. This is a rough house game. I got that kind of team. We can play this. All right. Thank Thanks. you, Coach. Coach Cal, <laughs> never dull. Seven point lead, Kentucky over Tennessee at half. Welcome back to Saturday Primetime. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Well you knew this was going to be a physical one and Kentucky coming in after a couple of subpar outings a blowout loss at Alabama a home court loss to South Carolina Kentucky has shown the fight here today they have played well at the defensive end CJ Frederick knocked down a couple of threes Oscar Shibway scored a bunch of points late and look at this Kentucky's got a seven point lead on the road here in Knoxville going to the second half how have they done it. Well they did it with defense you know their defense was much better in this game than the last five games that, that I've I've watched on film. I think one of the things for Tennessee though they turned the ball over nine times in the first half they didn't get to the free throw line they were not the aggressor and Kentucky had nine offensive rebounds in that first half it only led to seven points but it's difficult like how is Tennessee going to run if they can't grab a defensive rebound you know Tennessee shot forty four percent from the field in that first half that's not horrible 
but they missed some layups. They were not as as strong as they need to be, but they cannot turn the ball over nine times in the second half and expect to win. Holly? That's exactly what Rick Barnes just told me. He said, we never settled in and did us. We weren't ourselves. He said, Kentucky always plays good defense, plays hard, but their switches, they didn't pick up in some of those switches, and he said it felt like our offense didn't really work well against that. We have to make some adjustments there, but the biggest thing is taking care of the ball and really punching at Kentucky. He said, we had a chance at the beginning of the game to really run away with that and we didn't do it didn't execute see if they can get out to a better start here they try a lob but it doesn't connect in an early turnover for the cats here in the second half that was well defended Vescovy sniffed it out and he stayed into the body of Jacob Toppin so they couldn't complete that Vescovy spins to the baseline the drive and rejected I think Livingston is the guy who got him and it's Kentucky ball Frederick sees Wallace and Wallace misses the good look at the three, but another offensive rebound for Kentucky. It's Livingston. Really good job by C.J. Frederick of in transition getting to the middle of the floor, and that opened up that wide open three-point opportunity for Case and Wallace. Usually he'd knock that down. He's a good shooter. Rick Barnes unhappy. He's going to make a sub at the first whistle here in the second half, less than a minute in. Josiah Jordan James is getting ready to come into the game, and it's Olivier Kamwos coming out. Dan Tyree Key just picked up a foul trying to guard CJ Frederick off of a screen and he can't grab him what he's got to do is lock and trail get on his outside hip and just run right in his footsteps make him curl that screening action just run him off the three point line but the officials have shown at least in this game they're calling those initial grabs on cutters crowd wanted to walk there on Frederick they don't get it. Shibwe knew he missed it, follows after it, but it bounces to Vescovy. And in this game to this point, Tennessee has had absolutely zero in transition. Good pass. Key open. And it misses the three. Tennessee two for ten from three-point range. Frederick. And back comes James. Tennessee 14 and 2 on the season 4 and 0 in league play and they've won 25 in a row here at home. Ball screen by Plavchich. Vescovy just so crafty but he couldn't finish it. He got hit and the defense was behind him. And you're allowed to go anywhere you want if the not in legal guarding position and Oscar Shibwe doing a great job. When he runs the floor, he gets low and gets post position. If you let him post that deep, he's going to score or get fouled almost every time. A rebound away from a double-double and the largest lead of the game for Kentucky. And this big arena is quiet right now. That'll generate a little noise. Plavchic knocks it down. They just ran a cutter off Uros Plavchic. And then he ducked right into the lane and got that same deep post position we were talking about with Shibwe. Their Plavjic is able to push him off the lane a bit. Now Shibwe's got to face up and make a move much more difficult. And some help defense there by Phillips to take it away, but then he throws it away as he was falling out of bounds. And now we got an offensive foul going against the Cats. It'll be on Wallace, and that'll be his third. Now watch this action off of Euros Plavchic down on the baseline. You get a cutter from the left hand side of the floor. It's Julian Phillips. He's going to cut right off. It's almost like a flex cut. And then that allows Euros Plavchic to duck in and get post position on the low block. He's one on one in the post with Shibwe and Shibwe let him get into the middle. You get right to the top of that restricted arc and forget it. You're going to score or get fouled most of the time. So a loss for Kentucky Wallace to the bench with his third foul and the freshman to do Fierro who played a few minutes in the first half comes back in. Oh boy. I mean James looked like he had a wide open one but thought Plopchich had a better one. You know, and that, those are some of the defensive issues for Kentucky jumping up. I mean that was not a difficult play to guard all of a sudden you get a wide open layup. Good matchup Frederick and Vescovy and Vescovy wins this one. Just have to be stronger with the ball. James. And it's Kentucky ball. Boy, every rebound's a battle right now. Reeves steps into a three. 
And Shibwe called for the foul going over the back. That'll be his second. Now you can go over the top to get a rebound. Now, if you push off or you're over on the guy's back, that might be a different deal. But I didn't see this. I don't know. I mean, he's going against a smaller guy. That was a good job by Vescovy to, to get that call, but I don't know about that one. That's called rebounding where I came from. <laughs> Two physical guys. The double team. Plavchic kicks it out. Good James. duck in. And another bucket for Oros Plavchic. As good and as tough and as strong as Shibwe is. He's 6'9", and Plavchic is 7'1". Well, that was a great duck into the lane after the drive was taken away from Josiah Jordan James by Jacob Toppin. He just got right into the legs of Oscar Shibwe. That's just a big time play by Euros Klopcic. Jordan does the tongue, not Euros, right? At the start of the game, we told you that Kentucky is vulnerable to duck ins, and Euros Klopcic ducking in on that drive right in front of Oscar Shibwe. Shibwe's got to play him on the line and up the line. He can't allow Plavchic just to cut across his face, get into the middle, but a great job on the offensive end by Euros Plavchic. Well, Plavchic at 7-1 has an outstanding reach, and you saw him use it on that baby hook shot. Look at this. I tried to give you some perspective by just how tall the reach is. That's me on the ladder. It's 9-4 and 3 quarters. He is such a big, long presence in the lane. Really nice offense there on the hook, but he also uses it defensively. One of the best defenders against field goal percentage and opponents. Moments after that, Holly was uh, called for basket interference for hanging on the rim, but that'll happen. Well, Holly's a perimeter defender. You can't <laughs> expect her to switch off yeah. and guard the post. That's, that's true. just ask. As, as much versatility as she has, that's too much to ask. The Cats get it in to Toppin. Again, minutes for Thierro, Kaysen Wallace, three fouls. Sabir Wheeler not playing today because of a shoulder injury. And Zakai Ziegler guarding C.J. Frederick now. They tried to get into middle ball screen action, but couldn't get into it. Boy, Shibwe got great position, couldn't finish it, and was looking around expecting a foul call. Vescovy got grabbed off that initial drive, no call. Yeah, it's hard to imagine when you go up for that shot that there's not going to be any contact, especially the secondary defender trying to block it from behind. John Calipari really wanted a foul called in that situation. Reeves off to Thierro. He makes a strong move inside and will be rewarded with a trip to the free throw line. Yeah, Ziegler got him there. You got to you cannot foul there. You have to let Adu come over and challenge the shot. Well, a great moment at halftime here in Knoxville. Chris Lofton, who played for the Vols from 2004 through 2008, becomes the fifth men's player to have his jersey retired and elevated up into the rafters here. Uh, better than 2,100 points, more than 400 threes, an All-American in 07, 08, and once dropped 31 on the Cats at Rupp. He's with Holly Rowe. Well, Chris Lofton, the who's who of Vol Nation has come back here to watch you get your jersey retired. What does that mean to you and the huge ovation to know how well thought of you are by this fan base? It was very special. I can't I can't put into words, you know, the emotions I felt. And I just want Vol Nation to know I appreciate them and all the support over the years. You were such a special player here, but I was at dinner with you and your buddies last night, and they were talking about your, your cancer battle. Nobody knew what you were going through. How do you describe how you kept playing that senior year with no one knowing what was going on? I just was, you know, I didn't look at myself. It was for my team. I didn't want to attention, so it was all about them putting other people first and trying to be selfless and just persevere and keep fighting and, you know, keeping God first. What does it mean to you that when you are remembered here at Tennessee Nation, that's probably the first word everybody said is selfless? Yeah, that's, that's best. You know, I was always taught, you know, be a better person than basketball player, and you know, that'll take you far in life. You have given Zakai Ziegler permission to keep wearing number five for the rest of the season. Why? Because he, the way he plays, the, the grit, the hard work he puts it in, it's, it's what the number five um, is represented well. 
you leave here today after feeling all this love, all this appreciation? They're playing Kentucky. You grew up in Kentucky near, nearby, and then they didn't really recruit you. How does this feel to be at this particular game? It's always special. You know, to be here at Thompson Bowling, playing against my home state, it's nothing better. Well, Chris Lofton, a wonderful career, and it's wonderful to be here to watch you celebrate it tonight. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Just a great career and wonderful to see his his number go up to the Raptors. Allen Houston, Candace Parker among uh, Tennessee royalty who are here in the arena today to honor Chris Lofton as we get a foul in the corner and Vescovy is still down. Well to be a better basketball a better person than basketball player is a tall order considering the great truly great player that Chris Lofton was here at Tennessee but. He is a better person than a basketball player, just a magnificent human being. I think you could see that coming through if you don't know him with Holly Rowe there. And I think Alan Houston has spent, since his playing career, he's been sleeping in a hyperbaric chamber. <laughs> he looks fantastic. Yeah. Candace Parker always does, but Alan Houston, who's a little bit older than her, looks fantastic. He played late 80s, early 90s, right? So he's in his early 50s, looks great. Tennessee led in the opening minutes of the game. Kentucky has led ever since. Trying to pull off an upset here. Kentucky has guarded Tennessee's actions, especially on Vescovy when he sets a back screen, comes off that flare screen, but strong drive. And using that left hand, he's left handed to avoid the block shot. You know, right down the lane line for Santiago Vescovy. And Kentucky still has the lead. Crowd getting back into it, though, as Tennessee has narrowed the gap some. Adu now defending Shibwe, and Shibwe goes right around him. He's got a dozen. Just faced up on the elbow, used that chicken wing to hold him off, and never used his left hand on the shot. Adu, who's got the green light to shoot the three. It's something he's worked on a lot. Hit a couple in the game last week, but missed that one. Well, you might want to go yellow light on that one because, you know, they didn't even make a pass. They didn't make Kentucky guard. Livingston got tripped up, got tangled in the feet of Phillips. And no foul was called, so that's going to be a turnover. Unless they reverse something, that's going to be Tennessee ball. And I think Terry Oglesby, and, and rightly so, saying he didn't get fouled. He kind of tripped over his foot. Take a look at him there just on the right side of the screen. Yeah, actually, it was his own foot and, foot and yeah. Oscar Shibwe. Yep. Lobchich back in quickly, Jay, after Shibwe went around Adu with ease. James defended well by Toppin. Tennessee a little scrambly here in this possession. Trying to make too many plays off the run. Ziegler penetrates and finishes. Well, he missed a couple layups in the first half. But Sagai Ziegler, much more accurate on that right handed layup. He can just blow by people with that speed. Got it down to three again, and some folks have started standing here in Knoxville. A little single double action trying to free up CJ Frederick, but Vescovy does a really good job of locking on to him and keeping with him. Livingston trying to turn the corner. Blocked by Plavchic. Kentucky ball with five on the shot clock. Livingston making some strong drives to the basket. Had to finish through contact there. I just don't see how that's not a foul. I mean, he wasn't in legal guarding position. He's got his arms all over him. I mean, that's impossible not to call a foul. Unfortunate for Kentucky. But these games are physical, man. Frederick a clean look and Plavcic down with it remarkably that's his first rebound of the game as much as he's played and as well as he's played the big fella just brought down his first rebound of the game but he is helping his team in many many ways here today well every time a shot goes up he's just turning around and essentially face guarding Oscar Shibwe to block him out he's not turning to box out so he's not worried about getting a defensive rebound he's trying to make sure Oscar Shibwe doesn't get an offensive rebound they have a saying here in the Tennessee program it's not about me that is plastered all over their their locker room and their film room oh, Shibwe little hip action there on Plavchic no call look at this and it goes 
Big fella's doing some work here today. Boy, and Dan, how physical is this game? I mean, that wasn't called. You had the Shibway dunk that wasn't, or Shibway a dunk attempt that wasn't called, and that last Livingston drive. You have got to be strong in this one. But anything out front, they're calling. And this has been really here. interesting. Under 12 timeout here at Thompson Bowling Arena, Eurosh Plavchich in Tennessee have gotten back within one. How about the footwork for the big guy, Jay? Did a good job after that initial contact that he got and just pivoting to get that shot to go. Good job by Plavchich. Plus. And Kevin, thank you. And again, uh, sounds like still maybe some hope for Armando Gay Baycott to play in that game after rolling his left ankle a few days ago in North Carolina's win over Notre Dame, North, uh, North Carolina at Louisville. The next game up on ESPN here this afternoon. I know Armando Baycott wants to play, but if he was on crutches during the day, you wonder if it's worth the risk against Louisville. Holly Rowe was in the last Kentucky huddle and she's got this information Holly well, John Calipari was just talking to his team about the lack of offensive rebounding he looked at Oscar Shibway he said you, you've been really one of the best rebounders in the country but you're getting boxed out right now you can't get blocked out you've got to move you've got to make your impose your will down there they've got to get more of these misses and get those offensive boards guys Holly thank you the drive by Livingston and there's the travel that the crowd wanted a couple of seconds earlier but just couldn't Stop his feet from sliding in the paint. For the most part in this game, Kentucky has kept Tennessee out of transition. You know, this has been a grinding fist fight throughout the course of the game. And this is a, a score right now, 39-38. You usually see it halftime. And we've got 11 minutes to go in regulation. Tennessee looking for its first lead of the second half. Ziegler. Tried to dump it off. Plavchich had it. And it flies out of bounds. It will stay with the balls. Plavchich wanted a foul call, but it will be Tennessee basketball. Yeah, I don't think it's worth the effort to ask for a foul in this game. This has been a really physical contest, which is just to his liking. Both he and Shibuya, they like the physical stuff. Tennessee has only been to the free throw line three times in this game. Shot clock's at three. Vescovy gets it off. And the rebound down to Ware. The shot quality for Tennessee has not been great. You know, they've not been able to get what they want. Kentucky's defense has been good. Now here comes the high ball screen. Got a switch. Now Ziegler on Ware. They've switched off. Now Phillips takes him. Wallace with the ball playing with three fouls. The arrow. I think James got a piece of it, but a foul call going against Tennessee. Well, the fans don't like it, but there was a lot of contact. I think it's Plavchich who got the call. Looked like the ball came out first, but there was a bunch of contact on Piero. And then look at look at Shibway grabbing the arm of Plavchich. I mean, the physicality in this game has been really incredible. Kentucky getting the job done at the line 10 for 11 on the afternoon in the last five Kentucky games the freshman Adu Fierro has played 17 minutes against Missouri he's played 18 minutes against Alabama but he also didn't play at all in a couple of games one against LSU one against South Carolina but they need him today with Wheeler out and Wall is kind of in and out of foul trouble today well, he's an athletic wing but you're right without Wheeler that changes the rotation but the has got transition ability. He can drive it and he's only hit a couple of threes on the season. But when he's open he can knock down a shot. Now going back to that high ball screen with everybody else flat. Good pass. Key. Yes. The assist to Ziegler and this game is tied. Smart of Rick Barnes to try to spread out this Kentucky defense he did that a little bit in the first half but that might be a staple down the stretch because Ziegler can blow by just about anybody on that initial dribble and you give him something with that high ball screen and you're going to draw help defenders and play out of it seventh assist of the afternoon for Zakai Ziegler ball screen Shibwe Wallace floats it up too strong 
And it's Tennessee ball. Everybody flat along the baseline. Three people flat along the baseline. Ziegler blows by, refuses the ball screen, and Tyreek Key just moves up the sideline and gets into the vision of the passer for that wide open three. James. And Reeves had it, but he and Shibwe collide, and it bounces to Plavchic. And a fresh possession now for the Volunteers. And I think we have a shot clock issue about whether that should have reset to it reset to 30. It should have just reset to 20. So they'll probably knock that down to 16 here. With two Kentucky players going after that ball and battling each other, just not communicating. And Holly Rowe had mentioned that John Calipari challenged Shibwe to go after the ball, and he did, but at the expense of knocking down a teammate and losing possession. Terry Oglesby now has the headset on so they want to see how many seconds ran off the possession once Tennessee got the ball back. You see Reeves had the ball but Shiba was going after it without maybe not recognizing he was there. And there was a reset right as uh, the pass went from Plavchic out to Ziegler. It shouldn't take too long to figure out. And 14 on the clock. Tennessee ball. Three timeout for both coaches. Well, once again, Ziegler has been a huge spark for Tennessee this afternoon, coming off the bench. Game high seven assists. He's now got 34 assists in his last four games. Yeah, his last three games, he's averaging seven points, nine assists, two and a half steals, and he was five of nine from three point range. And he's been successful in this game, blowing by and driving. And Kentucky's not getting a rotation. If they did, he might drop it off. But they're forcing him to finish, and the last couple, he has finished. First lead for the Vols since the 436 mark of the first half, and now a steal by Vescovy. Boy, they had a four on two, but he pulled up for a three and didn't make it. He thought he had rebounding and pulled up with the three. And, and a trip is called on Ziegler. Now that could have been what would feel like a backbreaking play for Tennessee if Vescovy, who made a great steal against C.J. Frederick, just sticking his hand in the passing lane, taking it away. If he knocks down that three, the lid blows off this place. But I think he thought, you know what, I got rebounding if I miss it. The miss just came out too long for Tyreek Key to get. And that was, an, that was an easy call. Inadvertent, but a foul nonetheless. And it's his fourth. So the spark plug for Tennessee goes to the bench. Plavchich just sat down as well. So this feels like a key stretch right now for Tennessee, playing without two of their best players here this afternoon. And Jonas Adu having to take on Oscar Shibwe, and that is a challenge. Frederick. Boy, how did that not go down? Well, everything but the ball dropping in. And Adu really challenged that. He got up high to really challenge it. Maybe that was just enough to throw Frederick off a little bit. Frederick started really hot, had 10 of Kentucky's first 15 points in this game, has not scored since. Well, they've adjusted nicely. They're locking and trailing on everything, and when he catches it, then you got a defender right on you. But they're forcing him to use screens, and he's still getting grabbed. Reeves with a step back three. Kentucky back on top. Nice job by Reeves of using the screen, getting the switch, and then using the step back move to get that shot. He can really shoot it. He leads Kentucky in shot attempts. 20 points per game last year with Illinois State. Best could be a clean look. Around and out, Shibwe, his 11th rebound of the afternoon. Well, he got a great screen from Jonas Adu with that play behind action. And you're not gonna get a more wide open shot, just didn't make it. Top into Reeves. 
And the 17 footer goes down. So back to back makes for Antonio Reeves. Reeves doing a really good job in this last stretch of coming off of screens and setting him up, setting up his cuts and picking off his defender. Now Kentucky switching those guard exchanges. Key in the post, jump hook. And it's a one point game. Well, Tyree Key has operated down there before. You mentioned he was two time All Missouri Valley Conference at Indiana State. He's six all time in scoring for the Sycamores. He scored close to 1,700 points in that uniform. You just like saying Sycamores, admit it. I do. <laughs> I wonder who's number one there. Uh, yeah, I wonder. Who's, who's the number one scorer at Indiana yeah. State? I can't remember. Never made much of himself at the, at the next level. That Larry Bird. Larry guy. Bird. Yeah, boy, he could shoot a bit. That was a great team they had in 79. Carl Nix. Lost to Magic in Michigan State in the NCAA championship game. Phillips. Offensive foul. One point lead Kentucky trying to pull off the upset here on the road at Antonio Reeves knocking down shots right now for the Cats. Antonio Reeves is a 40% three point shooter so you have to get out on him got a switch Olivier Camois on him just a step back knocks down the shot and then off the screen by Jacob Toppin pulling up for that mid range jumper Kentucky competitive in Thompson bowling. After a 26 point loss at Alabama and a home court loss to South Carolina. John Calipari was hoping for a better record here this afternoon. We don't know if they're going to win this game, but 33 minutes into it, Jay, they are in it. And the effort has been significantly better for Kentucky than it's been in recent games. They've got a one point lead over the Vols, who have won 25 in a row at home and are looking for their first three game winning streak against Kentucky since you were a junior in high school. Wow that's a long time. That's ago. a long time ago. Well Kentucky's done the job on the glass It's a team that grabs about 40 percent of their misses in SEC play. And it's been difficult for Tennessee to keep them off the glass especially Oscar Shibway. I mean, he really starts everything you have to get him blocked out first and sometimes that's a multi man job and that can open it up for some others. Notably Zakai Ziegler who's got four fouls remains on the bench for Tennessee. He'll stagger away and again grabbing a cutter. And Julian Phillips just grabbing Antonio Reeves just chase him off the screen. Now he's going to go shoot free throws just not a good decision by Julian Phillips. Holly. You guys are talking about the rough start to the season and, and the last couple of weeks actually for Kentucky and we talked to John Calipari about it today. You know he's been mentioned like maybe he would be interested in the Texas job all the rumors and circulating things that go around Kentucky when they lose two games. He said absolutely not. I, I want to see this through. I absolutely believe that this team is going to break through at some point this year. I don't know if he thought it would be today but he believes in this young group. He said they've just got to develop confidence. They are playing without two key players and John Calipari he's seen a lot of ups and downs at Kentucky but he is weathering this storm and and I really loved his pregame approach Dan. I thought you you did too didn't you. Yeah he was really interesting when he talked to us and he said listen I, I really believe we're going to pop. I don't know if it's today and he said. You know Kentucky can be hard when it's when it's good it's the best but the passion of the fans and you know for some of the freshmen it takes some getting used to the scrutiny that the program can be under. Shibway was lying flat on his back the Kentucky bench wanted to call there's no foul. Is that just rebounding. <laughs> no it's just somebody missing a call. <laughs> Ziegler back in. So Ziegler key and Vescovy all in the game together in the backcourt right now for the balls. He with a shot fake and a drive and the foul goes on Casey Wallace that'll be his fourth. You now to Holly's point on John Calipari I mean he signed a lifetime contract and Kentucky's going through a rough stretch. This has not been a fun year but I just don't see him going anywhere. Uh, I, I understand where the talk comes from. That's sort of the nature of, of the business right now. But he's not only going to see it through this year, but I, I just don't see him leaving anytime soon. I don't know where this stuff comes from. Ziegler into Plavchich. This has been a good combination for Tennessee today. And it is again as Plavchich will head to the line. Well, Plavchich does a nice job. 
you know, he got a screen and then cut down into the low post, but it was after he caught the ball where he was strong with it, pivoted, and then had no fear going to that left hand. And Oscar Shibwe picks up the foul, not happy about it, but Tennessee, for one of the few times, goes to the line. This has not been a high free throw game for the balls. These will be just their fourth and fifth free throws of the game. Coming up next, North Carolina, Louisville. Dave O'Brien, Corey Alexander with a call for you here on ESPN. And we just heard from Sight that Armando Baycott not only is going to play Jay, he is in the starting lineup today for Carolina. Well, that's good news. He's one of the best players in the country, and he was on such a high before injuring that ankle in the first couple minutes against Virginia. You know, his last five or six games, he's been averaging well over 20 points and 13 rebounds. I mean, he's been a horse. Bodies flying and it's going against Kentucky. Antonio Reeves going to pick up the foul coming off the screen. But he's saying, are you kidding me? I think I'm getting grabbed and what am I supposed to do? Now watch him right along the baseline. Well, he pushed, I guess it's for pushing key into Fierro. Yeah, they kind of see the last action. You know, instead you got two hands on. It's awfully difficult for cutters. You just have to be on the move and stay strong through it. Tennessee can tie or take the lead. Well, Ziegler's got the ball on a string sometimes, doesn't he? Two players in yeah. one spot, both Key and Vescovy. He is fouled on the drive. He has defender on his hip, no legal guarding position, just went in him to pick up that foul. Just a smart play by a veteran guard. You know, once, key, once you get your shoulders past the defender, there's no such thing as legal guarding. And just that body contact is a foul, no matter if it was created by the offense or not. Missed all of last season with a shoulder injury, medical red shirt. And then I think Tennessee fans kind of went, wow, remember they had that closed exhibition game against Gonzaga back at the beginning, before the beginning of the season. And I think they dropped 99 points on the Zags, right? 99 to 80 or something like that. And Tyree Key had 26 points in that game. How would I know it was closed? <laughs> well, they might have let a few people in before they closed it. <laughs> They're actually not allowed to, yeah. sadly. Yeah. Would have loved to have watched that. Tie game. But not for long. C.J. Frederick puts the Cats back on top. It's good action by Frederick. Vescovy had to go underneath that screen because of the really good movement and the great read by C.J. Frederick to get that open shot. Boy, and Ziegler missed another one. Well, that's three missed layups for Zakai Ziegler, all of which he normally can. Toppin rattles out and Tennessee ball. Well, Jacob Toppin has really improved that pull up jump shot. He's a good mid range jump shooter. Quiet day for him today. Just two points, one for four from the floor. Does have five rebounds and five assists, though. Plopter trying to get some handoff action, just picked off C.J. Frederick. Vescovy knocks it down, and the ball's back within one. Now John Calipari wanted a moving screen on Plopcic, and I don't think he's wrong, but the action worked and got Vescovy to the elbow for that pull-up jumper. Going out of a horn set to a high ball screen with Oscar Shibwe. Reeves with a runner. Yes. Wait, Tennessee just gave up middle. You know, that wasn't crazy difficult complicated action to guard but Reeves just able to get into the middle so easily give credit to Reeves but not Rick Barnes favorite defensively Ziegler again looking for the foul call didn't get it and a travel called on Kaysen Wallace so a lot of body contact with Tyreek Key on that play and John Calipari not happy about it Four minutes to go here in Knoxville. Tyreek Key, the ball loose. Wallace gets it. And the travel to call. So Tennessee ball when we come back.
Dan and Jay. Kevin coach thank you very much and here it is a three point game Kentucky over Tennessee in a game Jay that has been a one possession game for the last nine minutes and yeah they played better and yeah moral victory would be nice but Kentucky looking for an actual victory ten and six just one and three in the league zero oh and four in quad one down in the sixties in the net. Boy, would it mean a lot to this program to get out of here with a big road victory this afternoon. Santiago Vescovi was coming off some baseline screens and just executed a stop cut. You know, CJ Frederick was trailing him and he just stopped and got him right on his back. And then Frederick wound up fouling him when he curled into the lane. Just really intelligent movement by Santiago Vescovi and Frederick saying well if he just stops there what am I supposed to do well, watch him here he just stops now he's got Vescovi on, or excuse me Frederick on his back just got grabbed coming around the screen and misses the front end and then a foul I got on Phillip. James you got James going yep. over the back trying to tip the ball and get it loose but this game is set up for Kentucky to win it and Kentucky has fought so hard Tennessee has too but hadn't played particularly well and you give credit to the Kentucky and its defense for limiting Tennessee in this game it has been a physical fist fight from the opening tap and Kentucky has weathered it very well but right now you knock these free throws down and take a five point lead with under four minutes to go in regulation on the road. I mean, that's exactly where Kentucky wants to be. More SEC action for you Tuesday night, 8 30 Eastern on the SEC network. Brandon Miller, number four, Alabama, against Liam Robbins and Vandy on the SEC network and the ESPN app. That is a tough preparation game because Jerry Stackhouse, great rebound by Oscar Shibway. Boy, that's a big play instead of a. Two points off the free throw. It's a three point play. Now a six point lead for Kentucky. Yeah, think about the swing. A missed end of a one and one and over the back foul. And then three points at the other end for Kentucky. And all of a sudden they're up six. James from the corner. And another whistle, and it's going against Kamwa. And Kamwa going against Reeves, it looked like. And just put a little bit too much into it. And. On the weak side, Kamwa knocks it out of his hands, and then I'm not sure I understood the, the second part of that, but they called it on Kamwa. What a great rebound by Shibwe and terrific feet. Just a little pirouette in the lane. But these are these are big free throws right here for Kentucky. And Reeves is a pretty good free throw shooter, 72%. And you make this an eight-point game, give yourself a little bit of a cushion. And now it's about continuing to get stops and not allowing open threes and not fouling. And Kentucky again not a great free throw shooting team but they are making the most of them today and now it's an eight point lead and the free throw disparity because of Kentucky's attack mentality in this game. They've been the aggressor throughout the course of the game. Yeah, there's 17 out of 19. Tennessee just five of eight. Key no, Reeves the rebound. I'm not sure you want to settle for threes right now. Now Kentucky, they don't have to run clock, but you don't have to be in a hurry either. Boy, given how poorly Kentucky had been playing coming in and given how well Tennessee had been playing coming in, I don't know that a lot of people could have seen this coming today. A little floppy action looking for Antonio Reeves coming off those Block screens. Wow, ton of contact there. No call, and it's out of bounds to Tennessee. That's the kind of game it's been. That kind of thing's a no call. Boy, this has been physical on top of physical. Wow, and if anything, it should have gone against Kentucky, right? I mean, Vescovy didn't do anything wrong, and they might have a look at this to see if there should be a flagrant one assessed to Kentucky. But the point is they've got to go to the monitor. Yeah. I mean that was a no call. You cannot go to the monitor in this situation and just make it a personal foul. So it's either going to be nothing or a flagrant.
And when they look at an elbow, oftentimes you're judging, was it more up than out? You know, was it what, they, what everybody calls a basketball play? I don't, I'm not sure that's a basketball play. I don't know if they're going to call it, but. But well, then again, you get into the is Vescovy, you know, does he have room to make a play? Is Vescovy in the cylinder? That sort of thing. Well, that, yeah, to the cylinder. I mean, he, he fouled him. He yeah. wasn't in legal guarding position. So that should have been a foul on Vescovy. But, you know, just a missed call. So it's Tennessee ball either way. The issue is if they assess a flagrant, it's two free throws and then Tennessee ball. Do our ratings go up when this much television is watched on the sidelines? <laughs> our rate, well, you always tell me our ratings go up when they put you on camera. That is a yeah, fact. That's a fact. Give, give the people what they want. And sadly, in his mind, this is what they want. No, not no, this. No, not this. Not, not, not what this. they're about to see. Oh, the referees are going to tell yes. us. Chuck is on. over again. So Chuck Jones coming over and saying that that it is a flagrant one foul on Antonio Reeves of Kentucky. So Santiago Vescovi is going to shoot two and that it'll be Tennessee ball which it would have been anyways. And because there was no call made on the floor the only choice was to make it an F1. And that's a big play in this ball game. You know what easily could have been and perhaps should have been a, a foul on Vescovy. I mean, he wasn't in legal guarding position when he made that contact. Goes as an F1 against Antonio Reeves. And now you get two points for that. And Tennessee has the ball with an opportunity to maybe knock down a three and make this a one possession game. Still a ton of time left. 245 to go. But still for Kentucky, you know, you've got a two possession lead here. There's no need to take any chances defensively. Just stay solid and make Tennessee take a challenge shot. James inside. Another miss layup. Wow, how many layups wow. has Tennessee missed? I mean, if they lose this game, that might well be the, the story of the game. They've had at least four or five layups that haven't gone down. Well, three by Ziegler, that one by Josiah Jordan James. I mean, you can't get an easier shot than that. That was just a huge miss at that point in the game, and especially with momentum feeling like it could shift to Tennessee. Good shot fake by Toppin. The drive off the back of the iron. Rebound James inside two minutes to go. Good job by Toppin. Plavchich. Gets back to the right hand and it goes. And Plavchich continues to put up numbers for Tennessee. He's got 17. And that was a spectacular pass by Josiah Jordan James. To be able to thread it to the exact right spot to hit Plavchich in the right hand and then a beautiful move and pivot by Euros Plavchich. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Holly Rowe with you here at Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville. Number five, Tennessee is trailing Kentucky by four with a minute 43 to go. Kentucky playing without Savir Wheeler and without Damian Collins, but they have gotten uh, some big efforts from Oscar Shibway, 14 and 12. Antonio Reeves has played well. C.J. Frederick has made three threes. And the, the effort, the fight, whatever word you want to use, has clearly been better for Kentucky than it's been in recent games as they try to hang on for a victory. Yeah, and this is what Kentucky can be on the defensive end. But right now it's about being strong with the ball because Tennessee is going to be taking some chances trying to force a turnover. And you got to get it over. 
So Payson Wallace does that with a couple seconds to go. And then Kentucky, if they get fouled, and it's likely they will, you're going to have to make free throws. Reeves guarded by Key, eight to shoot. And a travel called on Antonio Reeves, Tennessee ball. Well, the pressure by Key, Reeves picked up his dribble, and then Shibwe was leaving the post as he was picking it up, so there's nowhere for him to throw it, and wound up walking as a result. You know, Key did a nice job, but he got him off the ground, and then because Shibwe went to go set a screen or something, he wasn't there as a receiver. That's 18 Kentucky turnovers, and they have the lead. Shooting 35% with 18 turnovers, crushing Tennessee on the glass. That's one reason. But Plavchich again, he's got 19, and it's a two point game with a minute to go. A great movement by Plavchich to relocate and make himself available under the basket for that Tyreek Key pass. And Dan, this is one of the many areas where Kentucky's going to miss Xavier Wheeler running the show. But Shibwe comes up, tries to give help, leaves the floor, and then a great read by Plavchich to relocate on the other side of the rim and make himself available for that Tyreek Key bounce pass. And now it feels really like a test of Kentucky's composure down the stretch. Tennessee on a 6-0 run. What does Kentucky have to do well to secure a victory here? Well, Cason Wallace, a freshman who's running the point with Xavier Wheeler out, he's got to he's got to run the team. And you know they've got to communicate really well, but now it's about being strong. You know Antonio Reeves, even though I look, I know Shibwe was leaving the post. It's one of those things, but you have to be strong with the ball in that. And you can't you can't turn it over. You got to make them foul you and go to the free throw line, and knock your free throws down. They still have a two point lead. I mean, there's no such thing as in command in this type of situation. But Kentucky certainly has the advantage, two point lead, and the basketball. A 6-0 run for Tennessee that began with the flagrant one on Antonio Reeves. The two free throws started the 6-0 run that has lasted over the last minute and 48 seconds. Yeah, that was just a huge play. What could have been a foul on Bescovy goes as an F1. You know, it was a no call, but they went back to the, the monitor. Bescovy took one to the chops. and but Right now, getting the ball inbounds cleanly and then being strong with it once you get it. Wallace, the freshman, surrounded. And a five-second call. No. Yes, a five-second five second call. call, and it's Tennessee ball. Boy, they got it into Shibwe. Wallace tried to bail him out and was immediately trapped, but they still had a timeout. And that's one where you're trapped, you got to use it. You know, he never put the ball on the floor to start a new count. Vescovy got a hand on the ball. And all of a sudden, another turnover, and Tennessee has a chance to take the lead. Vescovy, Frederick keeps it in front of him. Ziegler, off balance, off the side of the backboard. Plavchich, back up, no. Shibwe has it for Kentucky, and a Tennessee foul. Boy, Ziegler was wide open in the corner if Plavchich had decided to throw the ball out. Boy, what a stand Kentucky made there. That was a physical stand to protect the basket. Ziegler goes right into the body of Antonio Reeves. And, boy, there was a lot of contact on that around the trunk of Plavchich, but Shibwe comes out with the ball as he always seemingly does. I mean, He's got vice grips for hands. He's got the biggest hands on the team. And his hands are on rebounds more than any other player in the country. Just a remarkable, relentless rebounder. 68% free throw shooter on the season makes the first. Kentucky 18 of 20 from the line in this game. That's really been a key for Kentucky, not just getting to the line, but they're not a great free throw shooting team. In this game, they've knocked them down. But for Tennessee make or miss they don't have to have a three on the other end there's plenty of time left in this game take it down get to the basket and get a quick score and if you get Kentucky helping on any sort of drive to the basket then you can play out and kick for a three split a pair one possession game 30 seconds to go 
Game clock and shot clock basically dead on here. Vescovy left it short. Toppin has it. Got a foul here. And a few more time. seconds coming off the clock. There's the foul. And it'll be Antonio Reeves jogging to the free throw line. And Reeves today is six for six from the line. Boy, if, if Tennessee winds up losing this game, and there's still time left, but it is certainly not looking good. The number of missed layups. I mean, this has been a fight physically from start to finish. But the layups we're talking about, you know, they aren't the layups you should miss. It wasn't through contact. They've missed at least five, six layups in this game. Just stunning. And Reeves calmly knocks down the first four point lead. And now now Tennessee has to take the first shot they get. Yeah. You can get all the way to the rim. Great, but you can't be choosy. Take the first shot and get it down quickly. And John Calipari pulls the rest of his players out of the lane right now. Twenty of twenty three from the line for the Wildcats five point game. Ziegler short Toppin has it and they'll foul him with four point eight to go but Tennessee's twenty five game home winning streak is going to come to an end and improbably given how poorly they had been playing Kentucky is going to win a monster game here on the road this afternoon. Is this where you say reports of Kentucky's death <laughs> have been greatly exaggerated demise yes and this is a huge win. For them again 0 and 4 in quad one the resume had not been very good uh, their best win probably was over Michigan a game you did in London but boy is this one going to feel good on the bus or the plane or however they're going back to Lexington this afternoon I think it's a bus then a plane <laughs> well, that seems logical Lobchich is fouled out boy he played hard today 19 points this afternoon for Uros Plavchich. And to come into this game without Xavier Wheeler able to play because of that shoulder that he injured in practice recently, he tried to, to give it a go in warm ups, decided he couldn't do it. Case and Wallace fighting through that, those back spasms and back stiffness. But CJ Frederick came out right away and after getting down eight to nothing, and John Calipari told Holly Rowe at halftime, hey, we were missing layups, we were fine. Proved they were fine. Reeves with 18, Shibwe 15 and 13. That basket doesn't count. And the first road win against a top five conference opponent when they are unranked in Kentucky history. As they come in here to Knoxville, it wins 63 to 56 and pick up a very significant win and a stunned capacity crowd filing out quietly here at Thompson Bowling Arena. For Jay Billis, Holly Rowe, and our crew, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching. Seven point win for the Cats over the balls. Let's go to Louisville along with Corey Alexander. Here's Dave O'Brien.